Hello team, my name is Meek, welcome back to my channel and this on haul that has been on the way for I think six months. In case you didn't know, this book reviews my channel and a while ago I did this footage. Hello team and welcome back to my channel. Let's do some more unhauling. This book of truths, my channel, uh, yes, oh, I shaved my head in case you hadn't seen it yet. We have unhauled sort of, not intensely, but well, somewhat intensely, uh, from my TBR shelves, um, which I have in a stack uh, below because I did a TikTok for it. And now I am going to unhaul, sort of, or try on um, on my red shelves. And then I will show you all of the things that I have I'm gonna unhaul. Let's go. Basically, I cleared out in my TBR shelves, which are here. And then I did some clearing out of my regular shelves and then they have been stacked next to my desk for months and I kept thinking I'm gonna do this video I'm I'm gonna do it and then I did not so I'm just gonna show you what I am unhauling as per usual the disclaimer is that just because I'm unhauling this book does not mean that I hated it or that I hate your taste or that I think you have terrible taste in books it just means that I have less space than I want and if I don't intend on rereading books, then I don't keep them. That's that's just the way. We have some unread books here, which I normally don't unhaul. But we have some books that I have quite clearly bought just because, ooh, all of the unreads are secondhand, so I haven't paid full price for them. If I had, then I would be forcing myself to at least attempt to read them. But all of these are secondhand, so we have stacks here. So we have unread books, which I am going to do first. Then we have books that... I have duplicates of that I am getting rid of and then we have books that have survived several on-haul projects and now it is the time for them to find a new home. So let's just jump straight into it. First up I will be getting rid of my second-hand copies of The Mortal Instruments 1, 2, 6 by Cassandra Clare. Why? Because I want to get into the Shadowhunter series. I've read the first book of the Infernal Devices and I enjoyed it and I think I enjoyed it because of the historical sort of aspect, the historical like magical realism. Urban fantasy? No magical realism. Contemporary fantasy. And I will just not, I will not be reading these. I have like literally 300 plus books on my TBR and this, these are just not the priority. I read the very first book years and years and years ago, I think around when it came out, and I thought it was fine. The incest thing is, as, as always, a little bit weird to me, but these can go to someone else. So, goodbye. That's six. So, yay me. Next, we have a Subject 21 by A.E. Warren. This was very kindly sent to me by Del Rey. It is a utopian, dystopian book. It's basically set in a world where dinosaurs exist, possibly, something like that. And I, I, w I won't read it, I'm, I'm sorry. Next we have a book that I think is the oldest on my TBR and I just won't ever read it. I, I, it's just not going to happen. It's been on there for so long and it, it's just not going to happen. This is The Tiger and the Wolf by Adrian Tchaikovsky, who I've met twice now at a PR meeting and he's lovely and I want to read other of his books. This one is never going to happen. I, I bought it like, I don't know, six or seven years ago at least six years ago and I read like the first quarter of it and it was fine and then I put it down and I never came back to it and now it's one of those books that just stares at me forever. There's a chance that I'm going to take it back out of the unhaul pile because I feel bad about the fact that I, I should just read it. Also because it's just a really nice cover with that golden wolf but I just I have to try and get rid of it. It has to go out. Then we have The Chronicles of Amber by Roger Selancy. This I think... I picked up with my mom one time 10 years ago or or something it's 
been a while okay and it's just like classic adult fantasy and i have never reached for it and it's just been standing on my shelves for years and years and years i won't i won't read it it's not gonna happen it needs to go out because it's absolutely chunky it's taking up space that could be something else's space yeah i'm gonna go with that then we have two books that are just a little bit odd that I picked up on sort of a whim. And the first one is Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by, who's that? Selena Gooden. I've heard good things. And basically it is Death telling her biography to a journalist. And I picked it up on a whim because the idea is great. But then I read like the first... I don't know, like chapter, and I do not gel with it whatsoever. So out it goes. Next is another second hand that I picked up because it just sounded funny. And that is Early Riser by Jasper Ford. This one is in a vague future where every winter everyone sleeps. Um, but there are a few people who obviously stay awake to take care of the sleepers, but people are starting to die in their sleep. And I thought the premise was interesting and I still do, but I have never reached for it in the three plus years. I believe that it's been on my TBR. So goodbye next we have Decimerillion by J.R. Tolkien the idea is there that I would read this will I ever probably not but if I ever really desperately have to I'm pretty sure I can find it at the library and then we have The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan I have read the first Wheel of Time book and I think this half of the second one and part of me is like I would like to read it but it's like 13 books long and they're all chunky and I just picked this up because it's like an old school copy and I have to reread the first book and the second book before I even get to this one. And then I want it to match the rest of my books. So, goodbye. Next, we have another series that I picked up on a whim. And I picked it up because I love the first series. So, this is the Traitor Spy Trilogy. Trilogy? Triology. That was real good. The Traitor Spy Trilogy by Trudy Canavan. Which is the sequel series to her... Oh yeah, the first book is called The Magician's Guild, but the series is called The Black Magician's Trilogy. And that is a fantasy series that I read years ago and that I regularly reread. And this is sort of, yeah, like the sequel series, where I believe we are following the son of one of the main characters in the first series. And the idea was that I was going to read them, um, but I won't. I just, I simply, I simply will not. And someone else can hopefully enjoy these. Then we have some middle grades that I picked up in good faith and I probably will not read them because I prioritize queer middle grade now if I do meet middle grade. So first off we have Cressida Cowles which is the once. Cressida Cowell wrote the How to Train Your Dragon middle grades which the movies are based on and I love the movies with a fiery burning passion. I don't really care about the books because I think they made significant changes to the movies so I didn't like it as much but this is her other series. I yeah we have a boy and a girl and they're brought up as enemies and then they become friends. Something along those lines. I've heard good things Um, I just I won't I won't I won't I won't no. Next we have The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. Catherine M. Valente wrote Deathless, which was a book that I went in thinking I was going to get obsessed with, and I did, but for slightly odd reasons. And this is exactly what it sounds like. We're following September, who who is in Fairyland, and she makes her own ship, and she travels around. Something about a dragon as well. I don't know why am I doing so much explanations of these. I haven't read them and I feel bad that's why. Then we have Outcast and Oatbreaker by Michelle Paber which is the fifth and sixth or sixth and seventh book in their uh, Wolfwalker series which I adored and the idea was I picked them up because I was like oh I'll, I'll reread this series because I haven't like an omnibus I have like a, a bind up of the first three books um, and I, I won't I won't get to it. It just, it will not happen. So these can go to a, another nice home. And then last but not least, we have Ursula Le Guin's The Other Wind. It is the new Earthsea novel. I never read Earthsea. Part of me is like, I maybe I should. Many people are like, mm, maybe you should not. Um, but I don't think I'll, I'll read this one. So goodbye. And last but not least, this is Dune by Frank Herbert, which is obviously a sci-fi classic. And I 
really enjoyed the movie that came out. I have enjoyed hearing about Dune and part of me is like, I should read Dune because it's a classic sci-fi and I love sci-fi, which is not a good enough reason to put a book on your TBR just because everyone else tells you that you should read it. So I will not be reading this. If I desperately want to, my friend has one that I can probably borrow because she has said that she thinks I should read it, but I don't, I don't want to. And now we are going in to the duplicates, which is why I'm getting rid of them. First off, we have a book that I have tried to unhaul several times. This is The Invisible Life of Betty LaRue by Reeswap. I have another edition and I like the, the Forbidden Planet edition better. So I'm just going to get rid of this and it has to leave my house now because I cannot have it sitting around anymore. Next, we have A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, which I absolutely adored. I have another edition and it's white and it's beautiful. And this is just like the classic um, like hardback. Someone else can enjoy this sapphic, thrillery, magical goodness. Hopefully, it's it's amazing. But I I only need one. I only need one because yes. And this is going to be slightly controversial. I think this is Malice and Misrule by Heather Walter, which is a Sleeping Beauty um, duology, Sleeping Beauty retelling duology, seen from the perspective of an an evil fairy. I really enjoyed the first book and have never actually gotten around to reading Miss Rule. Both of these were very generously sent to me by Del Rey. I have the arcs and I am keeping the arcs because Miss Rule was one of the first arcs that were ever sent to me and I love it very much for that exact reason. Well I don't need them both in arc and in hardback so someone else can enjoy these. And something that has been on my mind for a while about whether or not I should get rid of them but I just I think I have to. This is the Illumicrate special edition of A Darker Shade of Magic with the very beautiful um like rosy fawns uh like covers and with the very stunning artwork on the inside stunning little itty itty bitty like editions they have like I, and I love the artwork. I love it so much, but I, I like this series. I am not obsessed with this series, so I don't need two full editions of this series. Do I have other books that I have like three editions of? Yes, but I love those and I like these, but I actually have an attachment to the collector's editions. I, I like them. So I am going to sell these and hopefully someone else will love them a lot. And last but not least, we have the stack of books that have survived other on hauls, but will not survive this one. At least I'm going to try. I'm going to try to not have them survive this one. So first up, we have Man Eater by Thomas Empson, which is a book that I have had, I think, for like 10 years, 15 years, many years. Oh, I bought it in 2008. That's 15. 13 years wait no three yeah 15 years ago i don't know that's probably wrong i bought it a while ago it's about a woman who eats men great which is why i've kept a hold of it i will never reread it but it's just been chilling on my shelves because i've had it for so long and i just don't need to because i never want to reread it Next we have My Sister, The Serial Killer by Onyeka Brathwaite. I actually really enjoyed this. It's obviously like quite short. It's cool. It's thrillery. I don't really read thrillers unless they're magical. And I thought this was fine, but I'll never reread it. So go goodbye. This is a book that I have debated so many times whether to unhaul or not. This is Revolution by Jennifer Donnelly. This is another book that I have had for years and years and years. 2011 12 years ago it's about a girl who reads a diary as far as i remember from this french young woman's perspective um and then they get tied together sort of weirdly through time and i just love the deckled edges and i will never reread it but it's just been on my shelves for so long and it does not need to because i don't i love it i don't have a special attachment to it i just have an attachment an attachment to its deckled edges Okay, here comes the ones that um, I, I, part of me doesn't want to get rid of because I didn't dislike them. I'll just, I, di I didn't care enough about them. First up, we have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I actually enjoyed this immensely. I love this cover. I will never read it again. And I just, it was, it was fine. I'll never read the sequel either. And I feel bad about those kind of things, but it's, it's just never going to happen. 
then there's a book this this one i was disappointed by because i anticipated loving this because everyone that i know loves this this is crown chasers by rebecca coffinaffer it is sci-fi it is queer it is a space like race and i didn't love it that much it was fine i'll never read the sequel and i feel sad about that Brandon's this is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson I enjoyed this I will never pick up the sequels I believe there are three books I believe it's it's a trilogy but then it has like novellas attached to it it's a Sanderson like YA sci-fi we're following a girl whose dad was a pilot but he was he betrayed her planet so now she's not allowed to become a pilot but she does it anyway that sort of thing and I've just been keeping it because like why not but I don't actually want to read the rest of the series so I don't really understand why I have been. Then we have The Wind Up Girl by Paolo Basigalupi. Basigalupa. I'm, I'm not sure and I feel bad about it. It's a Hugo and Nebula award-winning novel and I bought it when I was in America and I went to Powell's in 2013 and that's why I've held on to it even though I remember reading this and it vaguely traumatized me like it's real intense and I just I will never reread it for that exact reason um it's dystopian sci-fi ish and we're following several different characters and there's something like a plague and there's this girl who's I believe, like a pleasure-ish robot and it's just really graphic and I don't ever want to read it again and it's just been chilling on my shelves and I don't know why I've kept it you know then we have two books that are two of the hardest ones that may or may not return to my shelves this is is sort in the stars by A.R. Capetta and Cory McCarthy they are an author duo who are also married to each other this is queer King Arthur but make them a woman and I love the first book and this book is also good but I just I will never reread it but part of me can't let it go because I remember really having a fun time. And then A Phoenix First Must Burn, which is edited by Patrice Catwell, is a series of fantasy and sci-fi stories by black and queer um, authors. And I enjoyed a couple of these immensely, but I'll never reread it. And I don't know if that's just because short stories don't always mesh with me enough. And part of me like just wants to keep these because I did enjoy them but that's not the point of my collection my collection is the point of finding books that I love so much that I can never get rid of them I say that and I do have books on here that, that I could get rid of but most of them I want to reread and that means that I love them um so out no, this is not I found another duplicate this is the Red Scholar is Wait by Aleti Bodart this is the beautiful Lumicrate edition this is a queer sapphic robot human sci-fi epic and I wanted to love it so bad and I really just didn't um Aleti Bodart also wrote um something tiger like a little short story thing that I really enjoyed but I wanted to love this so bad and I just didn't so I'm gonna have to sell it which leads us into my arc on hauling um on one of them is funnily enough the red scholars week by elliot de Bodard, which i won in sort of like a giveaway on instagram um this is from glance and i wanted to love this and i did not so it's the same book one of them is just an arc and the other one isn't um i'll be asking some of my friends if any of them want these because i i don't give them out like i don't give them second hand i don't sell them because you shouldn't be doing that with your arcs you should swap them next also from glance this was also one that i won and i'm sort of sad about getting rid of this one because they're just lovely and floppy um so there's a chance that i won't get rid of this but i have debated it but i also have a really beautiful edition of it so um this is the whispering dark by kelly andrew this is sort of it's they they quoted it as a dark academia because everyone was obsessed with dark academia for a little while um but it's not really but it is about a deaf girl who comes to this university where they are taught how to walk into different worlds um and there is a person who is connected to her in this interesting way and it has some beautiful writing and i'll definitely pick up other books by kelly andrew this is her debut and she is also like an, a deaf author so it is um great deaf representation um yeah there's a chance that i might actually keep this there's a chance mm -hmm. is there yes there is so um but I will, I will try then we have 
Gallant by Ree Swab. I am debating whether I would rather keep the ARC than the finished copy that I have because sometimes I just have an attachment to ARCs. Um, but this was very generously sent to me by Titan Books. Um, I enjoyed this. I didn't love it nearly as much as I wanted to, but it's sort of like about this um, mute girl who was left at a school for girls who has no connection to her family when she suddenly finds a letter uh, from someone who heard to this uh, manor house um, but the only thing that she has left of her mother is a diary saying to never go to this manor house and obviously she goes and there are things and there is weird magic um, but I will get rid of that either this one or my finished copy yeah like I want to love Ree Swab so much more than I actually do and it makes me a little sad that I don't then we have The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. This is from Daphne Press, which is a imprint off of the Illuminate. I wanted to love this so badly and I did just not. It is very YA. It is um, sort of like kick ass. We are in a town that no one knows about and they are holding these monsters at bay and we are following their Winnie Wednesday. Um, I wanted to love this. I also somehow ended up having two copies. Um, so there is a chance that I will keep one because it's just so pretty but then it probably won't survive another on haul but it will survive this one but one of them will go last but not least i will be getting rid of the cleaving by juliet mckenna which was very generously sent to me by angry robot and i dnf this so hard and i now i think about it i really dislike it and it makes me sad the cleaving is a uh, king arthur retelling but seen from the four perspectives of the women in the King Arthur stories. So we have Morgaine, we have Ygrain, we have um, Nimune, and the last one whose name I cannot remember. Um, and it's basically, it's very, it was, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I won't say anymore because it just feels like I'm just bad mouthing it, but I didn't like it. And um, please check out trigger warnings before reading it, if you are interested in reading it. And that is a solid 42 books on hold and now I just have to get them actually out of my house because my old on haul is actually chilling in my garage and they just need to go away so that's the on haul I hope you guys enjoyed this video if I on hold some of your favorites I am sorry I'm also not because my favorite does not need to be your favorite and also vice versa I suppose it's such a weird word if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button at the same time so you don't miss out on any other videos from me. You can also click the little bell which will give you a notification when I put up a new video, which happens occasionally. So I just hope that it won't take me another six months to edit. But remember that I'm proud of you and you're doing great. And I hope you enjoy some books soon. Uh, lately. Anyhow.